Brandon Gaud and Charles Davis ready for this Madden Ultimate Team matchup as you get a peek at some of the big players in today's game. And you heard a big player in today's game as well. Let's get the party started. Devin Hester bringing it out. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. First and 10 for Montana and company. It's his target. It's Adrian Peterson. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. Finding Taysom Hill complete. Ran the perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Play action. It's Montana. He'll buy some time right. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's Montana to throw. Got an open man, it's Devin Hester. And they're gonna have another first down as he's gonna be tackled at the Browns 13 yard line. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Officially, it's a one yard loss. That's gonna bring up second and 11. Brings up second and 11 at the 14 yard line. Operating out of the gun. Here's Montana. And it's caught. The tight end hill. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And let's face it, you can put any Halloween costume on him. You're not going to be able to disguise him because for a tight end of his size, difficult to sneak him anywhere, but that's what they tried to do. Lined up on his right, tried to work his way back to his left, but just a minimal gain as the defense was able to react quickly. Rolling to his right. Here's Hester open right side. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. And now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. They'll run for it with Peterson. And he is into the end zone for a touchdown. Adrian Peterson. Fine work there on the touchdown run. And this offense takes the ball down the field and scores on their opening drive. No going for two. They'll kick the point after. It's up and good, and it'll give his guys a 7-0 lead. Following 
the touchdown. Here's Koo to kick off. Taking it about the one. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll run it with the 85 MVP, Marcus Allen. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. They run again with Peyton. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. He's brought down at the 37-yard line. Two yards on the pickup. It's second and eight. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second and eight coming up. Throwing Mayfield. He completes it over the middle to Michael Irvin. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. It's a game of seven. On third and one, here's Mayfield. He's got Michael Irvin complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Good yardage there on first down, exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. They'll try the left side. Peyton, and he'll be brought down, it looks like right at the 40. They were not fooling around at all, were they? Second and short, and they brought out the heavy package. Almost felt like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. They'll run on first down. Peyton, and little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. But they get back in the huddle. He's got, to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. On second down now, Peyton. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. That ball caught. It's the playmaker, Michael Irvin. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. Michael Irvin, 40 yards. And the Browns are within an extra point of tying this thing up. As a former defender, I would be angry as well. Could not get off the field. Well-executed offensive drive. No matter what the defense tried, they couldn't stop them. Extra point forthcoming. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. Each 
teams had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Hester to return from his end zone. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would, because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. He's got his man. This is Tate. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. They'll run it. Here's Peterson. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. On first down, Montana. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Willie McGinnis. Just creating a disaster there for the offense as that one goes 16 yards in the wrong direction. To try again after the sack. Montana eluding the pressure right. Now he'll let it go deep right side. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Flush to his right. Now he's going to throw deep right side. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Two things you can do in that situation. Run and punt the football or try and take your shot at getting the first down. They chose the latter, but they'll have to punt all the same. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. We'll call that a 43-yard punt, two on the return. And there'll be time for maybe one final play before halftime. The Browns drive about to get started. And with only four seconds on the clock, time likely for just one snap of the football. Escaping the pressure right. Finding some room at midfield. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. And we welcome you back live now inside the booth alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, set and ready to rock for the third quarter. Set and ready to go for the second half. One touchdown apiece, 7-7 seven, seven our score. Taking it about the one. And he returns this to the 22. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 22. They'll start the third quarter here on the ground. And some room to work. He's at the 40, the 20. And all the way in, touchdown, Cleveland. Marcus Allen, 78 yards. And the Browns have taken the lead. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And that makes the score 14 to 7. 14, our home team, 7. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. Hester to return from his end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. 
at their own 19-yard line. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And this game was all square at halftime, but now they find themselves down seven following the opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter. And they need to take a good, relaxing, deep breath, don't you think? Because right now they might start to feel like they've got to play catch up here and start matching them point for point, but it's still too early to get there. They can still run their offense, plenty of time to get back in this game. Uh, able to force him out of the pocket right, but still able to complete it. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. We talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. Joe Montana here going to the air on first down. Boy oh, stays out. Forced out to his left. And they'll get this into the hands of Hill complete. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet, just jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. Now Montana. They'll roll him out right. And this one is incomplete. Well, defensively, they haven't let him just sit in the pocket and get comfortable, and that's opposite a lot of game plans in today's NFL. Ordinarily, you're trying to keep the quarterback hemmed in. In this case, they brought the heat, and if he flushes out, they're fine with that, and they force another incompletion. A give to Peterson out of the gun, and he'll get about three as he's brought down to the 28. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secure before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. He was out there waving his arms, and when you got a quarterback out of the pocket looking for any help, I guess waving the arms is helpful. It certainly is, because you got to get his attention, because now you're in scramble drill. So everyone's adjusting their routes, finding open space, and he found... Oh, this is intercepted, intended for Hill. Picked up by the Hall of Famer, John Lynch. And the Browns are going to get the football here at their own 23. Brandon, I'm not going to tell him that you called him old in our pregame meeting, but this guy has been around a long time. If there's a trick in the book, he knows it. He probably even wrote a few chapters, and this is what he's always had, and that's a nose for the football. He's able to come away here with the interception. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, yes. second and six. Well, at the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to that and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. And he's going to have a Browns first down as the tackle made here at the 36. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Now, that's the defense that they were looking for, being able to get extra bodies to the point of attack to deal with the big guy carrying the ball. You really don't want to be in a position where it's a one-on-one -on -one tackle with him. Steps away. And he slings one that's incomplete. That was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket, I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage. But what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move, defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of them. And I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try a pass downfield that fell incomplete. He's got his target, the tight end Newsom. And he can only manage to take the football to the 40, and that is well shy of the first down marker. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching Madden Ultimate Team on EA Sports. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. Yeah. 
That'll be a 48-yard punt, one yard on the return. And the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the ending, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive. Oh, he put it on the carpet, a fumble. There, this is picked up by the Browns. And he's into the end zone. It's a fumble return for the Browns TD. This was a close game. They needed a little breathing room. Boy, they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave them a comfortable lead. Two able to connect on the extra point, and it's now 21-7. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. Hester to return from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And they'll be looking to start fresh. Just a moment ago, they were backed up, coughed up the football, and then saw it go the other way for six points. I just wonder, partner, sometimes they put such an emphasis on things. And you know in that situation, is it? And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Willie McGinnis able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. After the sack on first down, Montana. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. And this offense on third down today, they've hit two for four thus far. This is going to be third and 13. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. P.J. Williams with a pick. Who with a juke. Well, I guess an interception at this point on fourth down is just as bad as an incomplete pass. Either way, the ball goes over to the other side. Yeah, it's a tough spot to be in this late in the game, and there's not a whole lot he could do there, and he winds up giving the ball away. Suddenly, it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. They'll keep it on the ground. Peyton, and he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop. Ball right around the five here brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got a fourth down here in a game that looks to have been decided already. And his kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 17. Well, he was a spectator for much of this game. This is his first field goal opportunity of the entire contest, but he's able to connect. Yeah, he had a pretty good seat to this one, didn't he? But let's face it, all kickers that you and I know, they want to contribute. They want their opportunity, and he seized his. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Flushed out right. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. Picked up by the Hall of Famer, John Lynch. And he's going to get this one to the 23-yard line. 
He got outside the pocket there, trying to improvise, and he was calling for the ball downfield, but still the interception. I think what happened, he did call for the ball thinking that he was open, but I think the quarterback spotted him too late, and that margin that he had on the defenders, that got eaten up, and they came up with the interception. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. He's dropped just inside the 20. A little second effort there, but couldn't find a whole lot of space. It's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves him with third and five. Third and five. Now a give, it's Peyton. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. 118 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here. And you know, it wasn't a shutout. They did give up the points in the first quarter, but second, third, and fourth quarter, they held them scoreless. Brandon, if you throw a shutout for quarters two, three, and four, you win a lot of games in this league. And this felt a lot like, almost like if you say baseball, and the pitcher goes through the lineup the first time and the hitters get to see him, and then they come out after that and the bats start blazing, right? I think they saw their best stuff in the first quarter and just shut everything down from